So today, I'm going to be walking through some redwood forest, kind of along this creek bed, or beside it. Here's a couple of California slender salamanders. Just found these guys under a log here. They're one of the most numerous salamanders in this part of California. So I say uh, redwood forest, but really this is probably more of a mixed evergreen. I have a variety of other trees here. This is California Bay Laurel. It's uh, related to the type of bay that you used to cook with. We have things like tan oak. Some of these big trees aren't redwoods, but Douglas firs. And I don't know if you can see, but these guys over here are Pacific Madrones. And I just found this beautiful yellow-eyed Densitina under a piece of bark. These are the new mimics that I highlighted in my last video. Now that I'm done looking at him, I'm just going to replace this piece of bark the way it was. Okay, so under this adjacent piece of bark, we have another California slender salamander. This is really such a rich and beautiful habitat. Such a lush forest. It's really nice to see the forest so wet like this. It's been an exceedingly dry year in California, at least in this part of California. We've had hardly any rain throughout November and December, and just now at the end of December, we're getting a little bit more. Just flipped this rock and found another little Encetina. You can see this is a baby though. Look how tiny it is compared to my finger. Itty bitty. So when you find a salamander like this under a heavy object and you need to place the object back the way you found it, um, it's best to move the salamander aside while you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick him up. Just place him to the side over here for a moment. I'm going to roll the rock back over. Try to get it exactly how it was. Then you just take your little friend and put him near the base of the rock and hopefully he'll just crawl back under so like I said California slender salamanders are extremely numerous nearly every decent sized piece of wood that I flip over has at least one underneath it all right this is really excellent we have beautiful examples of two different species of salamander right here that were just under this piece of bark. Really awesome. So, of course, here we have another yellow-eyed Encetina. And next to it, this is an arboreal salamander. These are both of the family Plethodontidae, or the lungless salamanders. Um, they also share this family with the California slender salamander. So some features you can use to tell these species apart from other families are these costal grooves along the sides. Since these salamanders uh, respirate pretty much just through their skin, um, this increases the surface area where oxygen exchange can happen. Just like with the Encetina before, we're going to go ahead and place these guys near the edge of the cover object they were under. And they'll go under with a little bit of coaxing.
one piece of wood and we have one, two, three, four. And five, six thunder salamanders. Numerous. Here we go. We've got two arboreal salamanders and a thunder salamander. So, uh, you might be wondering why they're called arboreal salamanders when I keep finding them under pieces of wood. Um, they do have the ability to climb. They have a prehensile tail and uh, some pretty strong fingers. But um, most of the time you're going to find them under pieces of cover. This uh, man-made pool here has become a breeding pond for a whole bunch of rough-skinned newts. Sorry about the bad video quality and the glare from the water. You can see that this is an adult newt in its aquatic stage. The tail is long and flat, which is better for propelling them through the water. Here's a perhaps slightly better look at one of the rough skin newts in this pond. Here's a pretty nice dark Ancetina. Kind of resembles the rough skin newt more in that way. I hope you enjoyed seeing and learning about some of the California salamanders that call the redwood and evergreen forests their home.